We have the ability to combine multiple input types such as text inputs with drop downs to create really flexible search functionality with the new repeating groups. Let's have a look. So I have a repeating group of users with full name as text, job title as text, email as text. However, team is a separate data type. Here's our user data type and here is our team data type. Okay, team has a name and a list of users, but team is also assigned to a user on the user record. In the app data, we can see that Amy Johnson, her team is the brand team. So what we're going to do is create a search where we can search a person's name and combine it with a particular team. So in the design tab, I'm going to grab a drop down, drop it on the right hand side. Just line this up neatly. Going to style this very quickly so it matches the input on the left. Okay, that's fine. Now the choice style will be dynamic because we're grabbing the teams from the database. So there's the teams there. And choices source basically says which teams do you want from the database. So we want all teams. Do a search for teams. And we can search by sort by name. Descending no. So we start at the letter A. And then what do we want to display in the search results? Let's display the name of the team. Default value we don't need and let's say choose a team. Just going to remove these. Okay, let's have a look to see what we have. Here are the teams. Okay, how do we link this up? Currently, we can search a person's name. We can search their, their email address. And we can search the job title. Now, how are we achieving this? Brand, three job titles, brand. In the repeating group, if we click on the data source search for users, we're using any field contains input searches value, and we have ignore empty constraints checked. And basically what this means is if the input is empty, then ignore it. Ignore the constraint that you're setting. When the input is not empty, then you can filter the results. What we want to do as well is add a new constraint that says team is equal to the drop down's value. But we're also ignoring constraints on that just in case a team isn't selected. Once a team is selected, then that constraint kicks in. So let's filter by team. There's your brand team, HR, marketing, and social. But what about if this is a really large social media team and I just wanted everyone with the name Alicia? There's Alicia. If I had to change this to marketing, we would get no results because there is no Alicia tied to a marketing team. Flick back to social media and Alicia turns up. 
remove Alicia there and the rest of the team turns up. So combining multiple element types such as inputs and dropdowns is a really powerful way to find exactly what you're looking for.